Hey guys, this is Eliza and welcome back to a new video. So today I'll be showing you guys all the books that I purchased or received in the month of August. And this video will also have a giveaway, so stay tuned to the end to find out all about that. So we have a ton of books to talk about, so let's just jump straight in. So firstly, I'll talk about the one book that I did pick up from the library this month, and it's actually the book that I'm currently reading, and that is The Price Guide to the Occult by Leslie Walton. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat. She plays with, um, you know, the plastic cat on the top of pump water bottles. She plays with them like religiously. They're like, they're all over the house from when I used to buy pump water bottles all the time. And yeah, she's currently playing with one near the door, which is like just behind the camera. So I'm sorry if you can hear that. So anyways, I'd seen this one around a ton. And when I saw it at the library, I picked it up and decided to read the synopsis and it sounded interesting. It is also super short and that's kind of what I needed at the time because I felt like I was in a little bit of a reading slump for, especially for fantasies. And while this is a fantasy, it's kind of got more of a like a little bit contemporary feel. So far, anyways, we're just kind of now getting into like the really fantastical elements. So this one is really hard to describe and I also love the way that it is worded. So I'm gonna read this one little paragraph here on the back and it says, all Nor Blackburn wants is to live an unremarkable teenage life on the sweet little touristy island she calls home. But then a mysterious book comes out, the island's flora and fauna raise their hackles and strangers and acquaintances alike begin sprouting ominous fern tattoos. A storm is coming and it's coming for Nor. That, it just sounded so interesting, so I decided to pick it up, and I definitely am so far recommending it. Like I said, I haven't finished it, but I am enjoying it so far. So I didn't actually save any books on Scribed this month, but on Audible, I did save three books. So I saved The Magician's Diary, The Convent's Secret, and The Ink Master's Silence, all by CJ Archer. So this is books four through six in the Glass and Steel series. I am still on book two, but my mum has continued on in front of me. We both kind of started at the same time, which was completely unexpected. I started listening to the book and then she came up the next day and she's like, oh, I saw this book on Scribe and I started listening to it. I'm like, yeah, I started it last night too. <laughs> so she'd seen it on Scribe because I'd started listening to it and it had bumped it up to the top of the saved list because we use out the same Scribe. So she's ahead of me. So she is reading those. I am still on book two, but yeah, I did save them so that way she can keep going. And I think there's like a total of like 10 books in the series. So I'll probably be getting the rest of those in September. So the only book on NetGalley that I received this month was The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Katie O'Neill. So this is the third book in the Tea Dragon series, the first one being The Tea Dragon Society, and these are graphic novels. I read The Tea Dragon Society this month, so I'll leave that review linked down below, but it was really cute, so I'm really keen to get to the third book and also, well, the second book first, and then the third book. And this one doesn't need too much explanation because it's literally about a tea dragon society, and that is like little tiny dragons. So yeah, super cute, and I'm really keen to get to that one. As for physical arcs, I received Loveless by Alice Oseman. This one I received from HarperCollins Australia, so a huge thank you to them for sending this one my way. I have also read this one, but I haven't got my review up yet, but it will be up very soon. I'm hoping to write this review tomorrow and post it. So it should be up by the time this video goes up, so if so, I will link it down below but I also really enjoyed this one. This one follows a character who is discovering that they are asexual slash aromantic and all the jazz that goes with discovering that and feeling lost. And it's also in a college type setting and I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend. And again, huge thank you to HarperCollins Australia. Next, I received Indigo Owl by Charlie Archibald from Wakefield Press. This one I received as part of an Aussie YA bloggers blog tour and my review will be up on the 26th of September. So keep an eye out for that one. This one sounds super interesting as well. And this cover is just really, really interesting. I really like this cover. It stood out to me as soon as I saw it when the uh, announcement for the blog tour went on. So this one is about a girl who goes to this magical school School called the Al-Qaeda Institute where she is meant to be learning about her psychic abilities but as she leaves her father tells her a secret about her mother and she goes on a quest to discover what exactly the truth was about her mother. So she ends up going on this truth finding adventure with two of her classmates and end up discovering a planet wide conspiracy. My review for this one will be out at the end of the month and I'm hoping to read it in the next week or so. And yeah, I'm super keen and it sounds so freaking good. So now jumping into the physical books, I purchased all of these ones for myself, either from Book Depository, Big W or Angus and Robinson, as well as one from a previous box from Owlcrate that I purchased. It was the February box and I purchased this month. Firstly, we have The Game by Lindsay Miller. This is super short and also, unfortunately, a really shitty quality book, like the actual book itself. For one, the pages are not cut straight. Like, this isn't deckle edges. It's just the pages aren't cut 
very well at all. And this is like really cheap and flimsy. Um, disappointed with this one, but unfortunately they don't have a hardcover. Otherwise I would have purchased that. But I love Lindsay Miller's writing. So I'm super keen to get to this and it is super short. So should be very easy to read. So this one is about this game that this school plays where basically it's called Assassin and you're meant to, I'm assuming like pay pranks or something on other people. And obviously you're not allowed to identify yourself. It's meant to be all secret, but then someone actually starts killing off the students. So I'm assuming this is a bit of a murder mystery and it sounds really good. Like I said, I love Lindsay Miller's writing. So I'm super keen to get to this one. I am just disappointed with this edition, basically. And even like the paper is super thin. I don't know. I'm just like, as soon as I picked it up, I'm like, oh, okay. So if I love this one, I'll probably get rid of this and buy a hardcover when it finally comes out. Next we have Evercurse by Corey Ann Hadou. I think it's so pronounced it. This one I picked up at Big W for super cheap. So this is another one that like literally the synopsis is so short and I have no way really of describing it. So I'm just going to quickly read out this. So it says, once upon a time, there were five enchanted princesses, one witch in search of justice, one queen trapped in a glass box and a quest to find a clock from the oldest, a tear from the saddest, a lock of hair from the most beautiful, a crown from the richest to break the curse. But the kingdom of ever is under a spell far more threatening than any cast by a witch. So that sounds really, really cool. I hadn't, I'd seen this cover around, but I haven't really heard much about it. So I'm hoping it's going to be good. It's also pretty short. I'm still super keen for it. And it sounds really, really good. And I hope to get to this very soon. Next, we have The Other Side of Dawn by John Marsden. This is the last book in the Tomorrow series. I am trying to collect these editions. I have the first four and now the last book, but I need the two in between. They no longer print these. I found this one on eBay. So I am keeping an eye out for what are the two. Burning for Revenge and The Night is for Hunting are the two that I am missing. So yeah, I'm going to keep an eye out for them and hopefully find them eventually. But once I find them, I'm going to reread this entire series and finish the series because I've only actually read the first four books. I still need to finish the last three. Hopefully I'll find them, but it might be a long task. So Tomorrow When the War Began, if you haven't heard of it, is an Australian authored book set here in Australia. And basically this group of teenagers go camping as a last hurrah before school finishes. And while they're up in hell, which is uh, the camping spot that they chose, which is in amongst the mountains, a war breaks out and they're using their town as a bridge to the rest of Australia. It is really, really good. There is a TV show, which is shit. I nowhere near accurate. It's like a modernized version and it is no. The movie is really good. I actually really enjoyed it, but they never continued making them. They only made the first one, unfortunately. But yeah, don't recommend the TV show. Me and my partner were like, oh, we love the movie. We love the books. We should go and watch the TV show. Don't do it. So next we have Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. This one I've been seeing absolutely everywhere and it sounds really, really good. This is obviously a Cinderella retelling with a woman of color main character. I have not read a synopsis because I don't want to know. I'm assuming this is going to be like a horror creepy type version of Cinderella and I'm super keen for that. And being a retelling, I tend to not read synopsises because I just kind of want to go into it just with the basis of the actual story and then just kind of figure out how they're going to interpret it. Based on the fact that it's called Cinderella is Dead, I'm going to say it's going to be creepy, but we'll see. But I'm super keen and it's also blurbed on the back by Bridget Camera and I love A Curse So Dark and Lonely and A Heart So Fierce and Broken and I really love her writing. So hopefully that's a good recommendation. Next we have The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Herman. I actually have, actually hold on, I have two copies of this. I should probably show them both at once. So we have two copies. So I have read The Devouring Grey and really, really loved it. And I have the matching editions for both of these. So I decided to pick both of them up. The paperback has sprayed edges. They come with sprayed edges. I was going to only buy the hardcover, but I wanted to get the paperback just in case they only release the sprayed edges in like the first editions, because obviously I want it matching. So I grabbed both of them. So I won't talk about The Deck of Omens because it is a sequel, but The Devouring Grey is about this girl who returns to the hometown her family is from and she is actually part of one of the founding families of the town. So at the edge of town, there is this void basically placed thing called the gray and there is a beast there that haunts this area and bodies start appearing in the forest. So Violet and some of the other family, founding families' children 
that is a really hard sentence to say, I'm sorry. But they try and basically solve this mystery and try and save four parts. So I really enjoyed Devouring Grey. I rated it four and a half stars, I believe. And I'm super keen to pick up the deck of omens and I'm hoping to get this one very soon. And I'm going to stop saying that sentence because I'm hoping to get to all of them very soon. So next we have A Phoenix First Must Burn. This is an anthology and it's described as 16 stories of black girl magic, resistance and hope. So that sounds super super interesting. I'm usually hit and miss with short story collections. Obviously you can't like every single one of them so it's just kind of a whether I like more or whether I like less of them. But I'm super keen. There are some really interesting authors in here and I'm keen to pick this one up. I'll probably actually pick this one up relatively soon and just read like one story at a time. Also, stunning cover. Stunning cover. I have a fair few books on here that have like gorgeous women of colour on the cover because it seems to be a trend recently, which I'm loving. Next we have Nocturna by Maya Matane. And this is the Litjoy Crate exclusive. I bought this one on Facebook. I read Nocturna in July and I, I think it was July. Did I finish it? In, I don't know. I read it previously anyway, and I actually borrowed it from the library. So I decided to buy my own copy, but this one popped up on Facebook before I ended up buying a copy for myself. And I decided to grab this. It did say it was a Lit Joy Crate exclusive. I knew it was signed, but I didn't know anything else. And there was not a picture of this, but actually under the dust jacket is character art and it is stunning. Let me just, would you look at that? How freaking stunning is that? Super happy with this purchase. It was actually only like 20 bucks Australian plus shipping or something like that, which is basically the price of a standard hardcover. And this is a Lit Joy Crate exclusive. So I was super happy with that. There is also a map on the end papers. We have character art on the second page, which is backed onto a letter from the author. And then the book is signed. So super happy with this purchase. So this one follows two main characters. So we have the female main character character Finn who is a face shifter so she can change her appearance to look like basically anyone and she is captured by like a mob boss type thing and she is basically given this task to steal something from the royal palace or she will lose her magic forever. And then we also follow the crown prince who is trying to discover what happened to his brother. There was a murder but he doesn't believe he is actually dead. He believes he is being put into this void and he is trying to find his brother and these two cross paths and chaos in shoes. It is really, really good. I really, really enjoyed this book and I highly recommend it. I will leave my review linked down below. Next, we have All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I did haul this one last month as well and also a fair few months back, but this is the Owl Crate exclusive. As I said at the start, I purchased the February box from the past box section from Owl Crate because I really wanted this cover. I really enjoyed All the Stars and Saints. Uh, all the Stars and Saints? All the Stars and Teeth. Is that a book? Is All the Stars and Saints a book? I don't know. But either way, I really enjoyed this one and I wanted to grab this edition because it is stunning. So just to show off this edition, we have this gorgeous cover, which is green. The original is basically all blue, but this one has purple bits through it as well. Also, we have the letter from the author, which came with it. And then under the dust jacket, we have this gorgeous foiled crown on the cover. And then this spine, which ha whoop, this spine, which has a sword on the cover. So the original one has waves and it is also a different color. Like the actual hardcover is different. This one is purple and the other is blue, I believe. But yeah, so this is super stunning and I love this. So I'm super keen to have this edition. So this one follows Amora, who is meant to be taking over as High Eminenta. I think that's how you pronounce that. But at her demonstration where she is meant to demonstrate her dangerous soul magic, something goes wrong and she ends up having to flee for her life. So she teams up with a pirate who has lost his magic and in exchange for helping him find his magic, he is going to help her get back onto, well, it's not the throne, but you get what I mean. But they discover that there is a darker magic brewing and things may not be as they seem. So yes, definitely super interesting. And I did really enjoy this and I'm super keen for book two to come out, which is not very far away. So next we have A Song of Wraiths and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown. This one, like I said, it's another one with a gorgeous woman of color on the cover. 
they're popular at the moment. So this one sounds absolutely incredible. I believe we follow two points of view, one of them being a mailman character who is trying to get into the city and his sister is taken and in exchange to get his sister back and save her life, he has to kill the crown princess. Then we also follow the crown princess whose mother was assassinated and because of that, the court threatens a mutiny and to try and save the situation, she decides to resurrect her mother using dark magic and to complete this dark magic, she needs the beating heart of a king and she decides to offer her hand in marriage for whoever wins a festival competition. So this one sounds really freaking good as well. I'm so keen to get to this one. It is bigger and it is fantasy and I haven't really been in the mood for fantasies lately so I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to get to this one but it won't be a priority just at the moment because of that. But either way I'm super keen and I've heard amazing things about this. So next we have this one here which is a collection of short stories. This is detective mystery short stories and this is from the gothic fantasy collection. I believe it's called. I'm not sure what this is actually. Yeah, it just says the gothic and fantasy collection. So this is, like I said, a collection of short stories, but this is just absolutely gorgeous, like this edition, which is why I wanted to grab it. I did see Chloe from Books with Chloe um, pick up these editions and I'd seen them in QBD basically every time I'd been in there, but I'd never actually properly read them because I read gothic fantasy. I just assumed this was going to be like dark horror kind of gothic thing, which I'm not super into. So I didn't think I would, you know, be interested in it, but each of them are actually different. So this one is the detective mysteries one, which you can see in gold. Um, and yeah, that intrigued me because I love mysteries. So after seeing that video and then I walked into QBD and they were on like a super good special, I decided to pick one up. So this is huge. There is this many short stories in here. So I don't know when I'm going to get to this. I'll probably again, like just pick up one every now and then, but it is super gorgeous and I can't wait to put it on my shelves. Next we have The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed. This one, I have seen the cover around and I picked it up in QBD because it was a relatively decent price actually. And then the girl at the counter who served me actually said that it was really good. She'd previously read it. So that made me super keen for it as well. This one reminds me a lot of The Hate You Give, but this is set in 1992 Los Angeles and we follow Ashley, who is the main character. And she lives in the right side of town in a big house and goes to a nice school and she has life set basically. But then four LAPD officers are acquitted for beating a black male half to death and basically Ashley is no longer considered just one of the girls. She is now one of the black kids. And I'll just read this one little bit and it says... As violent protests engulf the city, Ashley's own world starts to burn. The prejudices of her friends rise to the surface and her family splinters and cracks. Suddenly, Ashley questions, who is the us and who is the them? So yeah, sounds super interesting. Like I said, it reminds me a lot of The Hate You Give. And I will say, I love this cover. It definitely stood out to me. And I love that, I don't know if you can see. So there you go, you can see in her sunglasses, there's actually burning trees, which like obviously is referencing to the fact that the protests engulf the city. So yeah, I am super keen for this one. I might actually try and pick this one up relatively soon as it is a contemporary. And like I said, I haven't been in a fantasy mood. So I'm super keen for this one. And I got that good recommendation from the girl at QBD, which makes me even more interested. Next we have The Sound of Stars. So I haven't actually read a synopsis for this one and I'm not going to. To, I simply read this little quote on the front which says can their love of books and pop music save the world so I'm super intrigued this is like an alien invasion type story and it sounds super super interesting but yeah I swear that's like all you need to know is that little title at the front I think I did read the synopsis to talk about it in another video but I've now forgotten and I kind of want to keep that forgotten but yeah, it sounds super interesting just by this little little piece of wording just here. And I'm so, so intrigued. Next, we have A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a YA fantasy following Sirens. And the YA Book Nerds is actually buddy reading this over on Discord at the end of September from the 17th through the 30th. So if you wanted to join the buddy read, I will leave the link to our Discord down below. But I'm super keen to read this one at the end of September. And it is super short, so it should not take long. Also, this did not come with blue sprayed edges. I sprayed that and then also sprayed glittery green seaweed on there. You can see a little bit up the top as well, which I am super happy. Custom sprayed and stenciled edges, also linked down below. So this book sounds like it is very heavy on the friendship side of things, which I love because I'm not a huge fan of romance. So I love a good book that features friendship. But basically this follows a main character who is a siren. She has to hide her powers, but then a siren is murdered and the main character accidentally lets her siren song loose at the wrong moment. So 
So these two friends have to save each other basically and it sounds really, really good. I am so keen for this one. And like I said, if you want to join that buddy read, anyone is welcome as long as you have the book or have an ebook or something to read by the 17th. We will be reading and chatting about a couple chapters every couple days and then having a big discussion at the end. So next we have a graphic novel and this is Misfit City Volume 2 by Smith Lustgarten Frank I have no idea how to pronounce any of those except for Smith. So this is obviously volume two and this is a kind of adventure finding the treasure type story and it is super fun. I really really enjoyed the first volume and I can't wait to get to volume two which I'm hoping to read this month during Bookopoly Readathon. I don't know if there is a third volume. I'm not sure if it is and it's just not out yet or what is going on but I'm pretty sure Misfit City volume one and two are the only ones that are currently available for purchase. And I don't know if it's going to wrap up in this one, but if it does, I hope it wraps up well. If not, I would so be keen to read like another 10 volumes of this. So last book and also time to discuss the giveaway. So the last book is Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston. And I will actually be giving away a copy of this because I have two. I accidentally pre-ordered one on Book Depository. Well, I didn't accidentally. I pre-ordered one on Book Depository ages ago. And then I accidentally pre-ordered one on Agus and Robinson more recently. <laughs> so... I now have a list of books I have pre-ordered so I can go and check that, but I didn't have that list when I did this. So I'll be keeping one of these for myself and one of these will go to one of you guys. So this is the third book in the Once Upon a Con series, the first book being Geekerella. These are super fun, super nerdy. I absolutely loved Geekerella and Princess and the Fangirl. It was both amazing. There is tons of representation in these books and they are just super, super fun. So I will be giving away one of these. So I'll have the rules down below, but also all you need to do to enter is be following me here on YouTube and comment including your Instagram or Twitter hashtag so I can contact you, but comment what book you purchased or received in August that you were most keen for. This giveaway is unfortunately Australia only. Usually I would do this international, but at the moment because of the coronavirus, economy shipping is currently suspended to all international locations with Australia Post. So I cannot ship this for cheaply at the moment. You can only ship through standard. So this will be Australia only. So that is all the books that I purchased or received in the month of August. There is a ton here and now I need to go and try and fit them over on this shelf somewhere and I don't know how. But I am so keen for so many of these books. I have a lot of new new releases because I have pre-ordered a lot of books for the coming months. Now that I'm announcing weekly the YA releases that are coming out over on the YA Book Nerds Facebook page and also our Discord, I am now knowing about a lot more books than I used to know about because either I have a full spreadsheet. I'll link it down below actually. I have a full spreadsheet for all the wire releases that are coming out this year that I have been able to find. So now that I have that spreadsheet, I know about a lot more releases than I used to and I'm thinking about them because I'm putting them in the spreadsheet. So I'm more keen for them. So I'm buying a lot more of them. But anyway, this video has been super long. Have you read any of the books that I picked up this month? If so, let me know what I should prioritize. And yeah, that is it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one.